can be called Sue or Dot or just about any name that ever shows up on the rolls of the Marine Corps. But Molly, well, it has a nice ring to it. She's got quite a story. Let me tell you about it. 1943, the inaugural year for the women Marines. World War II was underway, and the pinch for combat manpower was acute. The recruiting slogan was, free a Marine to fight, and more than 23,000 women answered the call. The wartime Marine Corps Commandant had this to say. They were responsible for putting the 6th Marine Division in the Pacific. For without them filling the stateside jobs, men would not have been available to form that division. In keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Marine Corps, an apt description of women Marines in 1943 and today, Molly's 25th anniversary finds tributes pouring in from around the world, wherever women Marines are stationed. World War II, Korea, Vietnam, they're always there to free a Marine to fight, trained and ready. Women reservists, or marinettes, as they have come to be called, even served for a year during World War I. The key to their success, as with the whole Marine Corps, teamwork. Working side by side with the men of the Marine Corps, they become involved with just about every type of job you'll find in any big, important organization. For example, data processing, with all its facets. But Molly Marine doesn't just walk into these jobs after basic training. Normally, she attends a special course or formal school to acquire the specialized skills she needs to perform her job. She learns the latest techniques, uses the most modern equipment, becomes a real professional. On the job, Molly continues to learn, becomes an indispensable member of an elite team, the United States Marines. But since Molly is also very much a woman, as well as a Marine, there's a special side to her training, image development. Women Marines go through a training program, much like the airline stewardesses do. Brush up on good grooming as well as the social graces. Hair care and styling, complexion care and makeup. Poise. How to wear both uniform and civilian dress. Accepted social procedures. If only the general in World War II who was asked, what shall we call them? Could see them now. He said, They're Marines. Call them Marines. But it's all in keeping with the traditional Marine image of smart appearance and good grooming. It pays off during duty hours and after duty hours, too. Women Marines are stationed all over the United States, wherever there are major Marine Corps installations, from the East Coast to the West. Off duty, they take in all the activities in their area and travel when they're on leave. You'll find Molly in civilian clothes just about everywhere you go. all over the world, and there's just no feeling as exciting as stepping off a jet liner in a country you've never seen. Molly is always welcomed by her fellow Marines, and within a few short days, she's as much at home in Japan as back in her own hometown. As she travels and works, Molly Marine soon becomes a well-informed, independent, capable woman in any environment. She may find herself in Germany, Italy, England, Panama, the Philippines, Vietnam, on independent duty, perhaps the only woman Marine in the area, 
or as a member of a team of 100 or more women Marines. Stateside or foreign duty, it's exciting. Molly's work, wherever she is, is varied, interesting, and gives her a chance to put all that training into practice, pull her share of the load. Smile pretty. She performs a variety of clerical and secretarial duties, gains the experience to be a top-notch administrator in any extensive organization. At work in the Marine Post Exchange, Commissary, Post Office, all jobs handled, in many cases, by Molly Marines. Living is good, at home or abroad. And when it's time to chow down, as they say in the Corps, You'll find Molly right in there with the best of them. Maybe eating the special diet menu that's available. Okinawa is another duty station for the woman Marine. And as usual, she is greeted by her fellow Marines. Often a friend she has served with at other locations. The Marine Corps is a small, closely knit team. And the feeling of closeness runs strong. The first thing Molly does when she moves on to a new station is to get squared away in her quarters. It'll be home for a year or two. In some cases, she may live out in town in a residence of her own choice. And then there's the briefing, so she'll know what to expect both on the base and off, whatever special features her job might embrace. Be prepared. It's no everyday routine. Some of the jobs performed by Molly are quite different from the normal activities you might expect to find a woman in. For example, meteorology, a weatherman. Or is it weather woman? And then there's the executive secretary perhaps to the commanding general himself, being in the know, gaining experience that will make a secretary something special. Supply, inventory, having the right equipment always on hand when it's needed by the troops, a complex, exacting job, vital to an effective corps. Molly Marine gets the job done, has made herself a permanent part of the Marines. She's also made herself a permanent place in the hearts of many people around the world. Wherever she goes, she's a kind of an unofficial ambassador from the United States with a special kind of appeal for children. If there's any one place that Molly dearly loves to be stationed, it's Hawaii. From the time she comes down the steps of her plane, she finds herself in one of the most exciting, enjoyable times of her life. And then, there's always the interesting work, the chance to learn more and more about her specialty, gain the experience she needs to become a true expert in her field. Dispersing, budget control, pay records, they're all right there waiting for Molly to learn all about them, then take over and run them. And always, the out of the ordinary, the job she probably couldn't get in civilian life, perhaps as an aircraft controller in a control tower.
When Molly goes aboard the sunken Arizona, now a memorial to those who died at Pearl Harbor in World War II, she knows deep down inside that she is performing a valuable service to her country, doing something worthwhile with her life. The Marine Corps has always been strong on tradition, and the women Marines have developed one of their own, an annual color ceremony on each anniversary of their formation. You'll find Molly and her sisters carrying out this during ceremony wherever they're stationed. And the 25th anniversary ball becomes a real occasion for celebration. The original World War II recruiting poster artwork is on display. The Marine Corps Commandant is on hand to present the symbolic red roses to the Director of Women Marines. The traditional birthday cake arrives, a highlight of every Marine anniversary ball. There's a brand new anniversary waltz composition to honor the occasion. It's a fun-filled affair, and you can just bet that women Marines everywhere are having some kind of celebration also, although it may not be quite as elaborate. The silver anniversary means a lot to Molly. So does the golden anniversary of the Marinette. World War I and the Marinettes. World War II, Korea, the Berlin Crisis, the Mideast Crisis, Vietnam. And thoroughly modern Molly is always there, trained, ready to back up her fellow combat Marines and free them to fight. It's a history to be proud of and a solid base for the future. Molly Marine. She's carved herself a permanent place on the rolls of the Marine Corps.